Hi, I'm Teacher Liz. Let's talk about the scientific method. Scientists are always curious about their surroundings. They always try to ask the why and how of anything that interests them. They try to solve a problem or answer the question using a set of investigative procedures called the scientific method. The scientific method is an organized way of performing a scientific inquiry. It usually involves six steps. Question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, and conclusion. The first step is to ask a question. A scientific inquiry begins with a question of how or why something occurs. To come up with a good question, try to observe your surroundings. What phenomenon would you want to investigate? An example would be, how does wearing face masks protect us from getting sick? Sometimes, a good question may arise from something that is not working, a problem like when the seeds that you have planted are growing slowly or the battery of your cell phone drains up too fast. In this case, a good question would be, what factors affect seed growth? Or, how can I make the battery life of my cell phone last longer? A good question must be testable, which means it can be answered by conducting or performing an experiment. So, if you encounter a question, ask yourself, can I make an experiment to test this? Let's try a few questions and determine whether they are testable or not. Does Pepsi have more carbonation than Coke? This question is testable. You can test this by performing an experiment. What is the effect of cigarette smoke on the lungs? This is a testable question. You can test this by making a long model using cotton balls, for example. Why is pink the best color in the world? Answer. This is not testable. The answer to this question is subjective. Therefore, it cannot be tested. Will fertilizer make plants grow? This question is not testable. It is a known fact that fertilizers enable plants to grow. What type of fertilizer will make plants grow greener? This question is testable. You can test this by selecting some types of fertilizer and compare the growth of plants. Need more practice? Answer worksheet number one. You can download this worksheet by following the instructions in the description box. The second step is to conduct a research. Get all information as much as you can. This will further give you direction on how you are going to conduct your experiment. In our example about seeds, the factors that affect their growth are seed type, amount of water, amount of sunlight, soil type, type of fertilizer, among many others. Suppose among these factors, you decide to investigate the amount of fertilizer that would make the seeds grow faster.
The third step is to form a hypothesis. After doing your research, try to formulate a possible explanation for the problem, a hypothesis or an educated guess. A hypothesis is based on what you know or what you observed. It is usually stated in an if, then, because sentence. If it states what variable will be changed, this variable is called the manipulated or independent variable. Then it states what will happen because of the change or the manipulated variable described in the if statement. This variable is called the responding or dependent variable. And because it states how you know this will occur. It should be based on something you have experienced or perhaps something you infer. Let's try to formulate the hypothesis using the following question. How does the amount of fertilizer affect seed growth? Our manipulated variable is the amount of fertilizer because this is the variable you want to change or manipulate. Our responding variable is the seed growth because this is the variable that responds or changes based on the manipulated variable. Our hypothesis then would be if I increase the amount of fertilizer on the seeds, then the seeds will grow faster because the seeds will have more nutrients to grow faster provided by the fertilizer increase. In this hypothesis, the manipulated variable is the amount of fertilizer, and the responding variable is the growth of the seeds. Need more practice? Answer worksheet number two. You can download this worksheet by following the instructions in the description box. The fourth step is to test the hypothesis through an experiment. Testing the hypothesis means conducting an experiment, which is the fun part. A variable is a factor that can cause a change in the results of an experiment. An experiment usually consists of at least two variables, the manipulated variable and the responding variable. Let us look at the four setups. Set up A with 1 teaspoon fertilizer, set up B with 2 teaspoons of fertilizer, set up C with 3 teaspoons of fertilizer, and the fourth set up, which is the control, with no fertilizer. The manipulated variable here is the amount of fertilizer because this is the variable that we change or manipulate, and therefore the cost in the experiment. The responding variable, on the other hand, is the height of our seedlings. This is the variable that changes because of the change in the manipulated variable, and therefore regarded as the effect in the experiment. To be sure that we are testing to see how the amount of fertilizer affects seed growth, we must keep other factors the same. A factor that does not change when other variables change is called a constant. You might set up one trial involving four seeds using the same soil and seed type. Each seed is given the same amount of sunlight and water and is kept at the same temperature. These are all constants. Three of the seeds receive different amounts of fertilizer, which is the independent variable. The fourth seed will be planted on a plain garden soil. This seed is a control. A control is the standard by which the test results can be compared. We are down to the fifth step, which is to analyze the data. This is where you need to record the data and present them in tables and graphs for analysis. Tables and graphs are visual representations of the data to make it easier for the reader to interpret the results. The table summarizes the measured heights of the seedlings for three days. The first column lists the setups, A, B, C, and the control, while from second to fourth columns, it has the list of height of the seedlings from day one to day three. 
from the table which setup has the tallest seedling. Of course, it is setup C which has recorded 3 centimeters in height. What about the setup that has the shortest seedling? Of course, it is the control which has the recorded height of only 1 centimeter. Now, let's graph the data from the table. Notice that the responding or dependent variable takes the y-axis, while the manipulated or independent variable takes the x-axis. From the graph, you can easily see which setup reaches the tallest height, that is, setup C, while the shortest height is the control. For better retention of terms, always remember dry mix. Dry stands for dependent, responding, and y-axis. This means that the dependent or responding variable takes the y-axis in a graph. Mix is manipulated, independent, x-axis, which means that the manipulated or independent variable takes the x-axis. And now, the sixth step, which is to draw a conclusion. A conclusion summarizes the results of an experiment. It is stated in a way that either supports or contradicts the hypothesis. If the results support the hypothesis, repeat the experiment to verify. If enough evidence accumulates to support a hypothesis, it becomes a theory. A theory is formed after repeated experiments. What if the results do not support the hypothesis? Does this mean that the experiment is just a waste of time? Of course not. It's okay if your hypothesis was wrong because you still discovered that that particular experiment didn't work out. What you need to do is to revise the hypothesis, maybe try another variable, and perform the experiment again. Going back to our example, our hypothesis was if I increase the amount of fertilizer on the seeds, then the seeds will grow faster because seeds will have more nutrients to grow faster provided by the fertilizer increase. Our conclusion would be increasing the amount of fertilizer on the seeds make the seeds grow faster or taller because the seeds will have more nutrients to grow faster provided by the fertilizer increase. After drawing conclusions, scientists have the responsibility to communicate the results of the experiment. The ultimate goal of the scientific method is to share the results and contribute to the ever-growing domain of scientific knowledge. The steps in the scientific method are not rigid, which means you can add new steps, repeat some steps, or skip a few steps altogether. The scientific method is regarded as the general sequence of conducting an investigation. There is no one-size-fits-all approach in doing science. That ends our lesson for today. See you in our next video.